Hey guys, Penna Daily here, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Let's see if I can find any fairies or something. I would like to actually, you know, have full hearts or something appropriate before going back into that. <laughs> going into our next dungeon. Uh, let's see. Oh, right. There is, in fact, a place that we can get. Um right here. Okay, we're going to go back to the light world. Right here we will of course leave our warp. And I'll show you a little... Whoop. Aw, she's not there anymore. Rats. Okay. The little old lady who was sweeping out here. You have to get her before um, you run into... Um, you have to get her before you kill Aganim, but she if you hit her with magic powder, she turns into a fairy, which is pretty nice. You know what? I'm going to do this. Fill up my hearts, and then we are going to take the duck to the potion shop. Get off here. Go. Of course, you know, I could have just gone to the potion shop, but eh. I have how much money? <laughs> Get another one of these. I don't really need magic refill. You almost never do, to be truly honest. Blue potions can be useful, but mostly at the very end of the game. So, back to the square. Pardon me, we will head down and, uh... Kill you. Yep. Oh, right. Uh, okay, we'll go back to the boomerang, and then back into the village of outcasts. And in here... Watch out for these guys. I think these guys are maybe Gini. It's hard to tell. In later ones, you can tell Gini because they have one eye and Pose have two. But with this, I can't really tell. So now we are in the Thieves Town, or Thieves Den. I'm not sure what it's called. But basically, it's our fourth dungeon, but it's not really that difficult. You can get through it without any special items from other places. So, we're going to do that. Because the item you get here lets you get some upgrades very quickly. Here is our map. As you can see, it's, again, a pretty compact dungeon, though it's uh, surprisingly complex for being compact. Go on. Up. Right. So, you know, keep just keep moving along this way, and eventually you'll come to some stuff. That one, I... Ow! Watch out for these... those losers. They are annoying. Now here, I will show you. You pick this up. Uh, that thing will, if it hits you, will turn you back into a bunny. Basically, it negates your moon pearl. You can turn it into... A fairy, just like you can an anti-fairy, but you have to do that. You have to hit it before it starts moving. Here, I'll show you. See? Yeah, once it starts moving, you can no longer uh, hit it with the um, powder. Jerk. Okay, so basically what we have to do is find our way around this... Ugh. Man, these, those guys really like to hide under there. What we have to do is find our way around this place and, you know, not get killed by the horse things. And we head down this way and up this way. And there you can see another treasure chest. I think that's the compass. We will find all three dungeon item things right here at the very beginning. There's the compass. Now, I'm going to drop down here, and you see one of those things is actually hiding under that bridge. You cannot... Well, I suppose if you got really lucky, you could hit it with the powder, but it's, you know, kind of very difficult. I won't say impossible, but very difficult. Yep, yeah, see, we got turned into a bunny when we weren't even looking, because it's almost impossible to tell where the stupid thing is. But now that we have everything, let's get up here and head for this locked door. 
watch out for that fire snake thing and go through here. There's nothing else of real interest in that, that room, so we can kill the Stolfos. That works just as well and gets us a heart. Very nice. This is a good way to kill them. You can just back them up against the door and whack them. And... Oh, hey, a heart. And the key. And if we go in here, we see... And this, of course, according to our map, is the boss room. But we don't have a boss. Curious. So, with the key, we go down here. And we come through here. Now, these horse head enemies are really annoying. They take a lot of hits. They hurt. That fire snake doesn't make things easy. Honestly, in some ways, it's really just better to kill him with the... Kill him with a, a skull. Ugh. And then get through here. Now, there's a fire fairy in here, or an anti-fairy, or whatever the heck they're called. You can kill these things. You have to attack the core. Insert your own Gradius joke here. Uh, they are completely invincible when they are, you know, in their shell. There we go. Now we're gonna hit this thing when it comes past us because really I need the <laughs> I need the hearts. And then we come through here. Yeah, see? Completely invincible. You can hit it a few times, really. Ugh, these things are and they they hurt too, so you kinda wanna kill them before they cause you too much distress. Ugh, oh, dude. Yeah. Luckily they only take two sword strokes. There we go. Now, I'm gonna hit this guy again, because, you know. There we go. And sometimes that'll happen. There will be some weird transparency effects because of the transparency of the those weird creatures. Now you wanna hit the switch from there. And now we're up here. That's a telepathy tile. I usually don't bother with it. It's Zelda, and she tells you specifically, don't be deceived by the magic of Blind the Thief. He specializes in illusions, after all. That switch up there will just drop bombs. You want to kill some of these little cockroach guys? And, yep, just die. There we go. They they can give good money, as you see. Kill him, kill him. And in here more. Don't open that chest. Well, I mean, you can. If, if you're low on bombs, don't open that chest. Because what you need to do here is and throw. Great! And if you check your map again, you'll see you're right over the boss room. So now there's a shaft of light in the boss room. And now I guess we can open the chest, because it's not like we'll be back here. And yeah, you get more bombs. They, they want to make sure you know to throw a bomb at that cracked panel. So, with that done, we're done up here. There really isn't that much going on. Now, of course, you remember, Zelda says don't be deceived by the magic of Blind the Thief. There was that guy in Kakariko who told us that the head of the ow, thieves was named Blind and he hated light a lot. Dang it. Forgot. We need to have... It, it does need to be set to blue. We can kill this guy if we want, but I don't... Th I'm not hurting enough to bother. And then, of course, we come through here. These guys aren't that difficult to kill, but you gotta watch out because they, you know, spit fire. And then we come through here. Just ignore them. There's nothing here right now that we need. You can get a switch that will open that door and you'll want that later but you know until then just ignore him Ow. just die and then of course we can kill this guy now you can lift you can actually lift that block and go down and in fact yeah you kind of want to why are you back whatever so we lift 
the block and go down. And we come through here. We can kill this guy. Get behind him and then he dies. Yeah. And now we're in an area with some locked cell doors. Ha! Gotcha. And, of course, kill these things. They pop out of your footsteps. The, you'll find them in almost every uh, dungeon in this world. You would have been introduced to them in the second dungeon where you going in recommended order. We're not, though, because this is a very easy... Uh, this is a very easy dungeon, really. And so... Oh, thank you very much. You saved my life. Please take me outside. Right. By now, you should be suspicious. Because everybody else in this world who doesn't possess the Moon Pearl has a fo changed form. But this maiden looks exactly the same. And, of course, Zelda told you not to be deceived by the magic of Blind the Thief. And, of course, yeah. You're supposed to have a different... Um, item to get out of here, but you really don't need it. And uh, honestly, if you get stuck and don't have that item, you can just use the mirror. It's actually kind of funny. If you use the mirror, which takes her to, takes you to the door, she'll go, um, please don't go this way. And then you won't be able to leave with her, which is another clue that something's not quite right. So we come up here, try not to get killed. There's the switch. I am not dealing with you. I want to go into this boss fight with full HP. Because, yeah, you take her to the boss room, lead her into the shaft of light, and... Yeah! Too bright! And here we are. Yep. Come on, jerk. This is Blind the Thief. He, uh, you know, runs around shooting you with laser beams. You can, uh, you know, you just have to keep whacking his head. You can't block his laser beams, but you can block his little fireballs with your red sh shield. And then, of course, after your first set, you he gets grows another head. So, at this point, I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways to deal with him. Which is, use the magic cape. As you can see, your magic goes down very very quickly, so if you don't have medicine of magic, you know, you might want to bring some along, but as you can see, I really didn't need it, despite everything. So, you know, pick up the thing. That's, yeah, that's a really short dungeon. I don't know why they put it fourth. It's sort of like level seven in the original Legend of Zelda, it, which was a total breather level after level six in its evil whiz ropes. But we got the maiden. The real one this time. Link, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. As the wise men sealed the way to the Dark World, the Knights of Hyrule defended them from the attacks of evil monsters. I heard that the Knights of Hyrule were nearly wiped out in that battle. You are perhaps the last one to carry on the bloodline of the Knights. It is ironic that the last one in the line has the potential to become the hero of legend. Surely you can destroy Ganon. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. And may the Force be with you. So yeah, now we have the Titan's Mitt. At least. Yep, yep, we have the Titan's Mitt. See where it says lift point three? Which means we can lift the heaviest things. So, we're gonna, first we're gonna go off this way down here because we're going to get something very very useful we can lift all those uh, blocks now so we don't have to go running around we can you know come come through here and go straight into Kakariko Ho hold on guys ribbit ribbit your body did not change you are not just an ordinary guy are you I used to live in Kakariko town I wonder what my partner is doing there without me Ribbit, I have a request of you. Please take me to my partner. Ribbit, please. Ribbit. Yeah, okay, I screwed up the placement of pleases and ribbits. Now, one, that shirt 
well, if if you uh, went and talked, that shirt would look familiar. And then, of course, somebody would have told you he was missing his partner. So we come in through here. And, yes, he's a blacksmith, a dwarven blacksmith, just like this blacksmith. You found my partner. We are very happy now. Drop by here again. At that time, we will temper your sword perfectly. So, we're going to go back out, come back in, talk to them. Hey, you, welcome. Ask us to do anything. I'll temper my sword. I'll give you a big discount. Ooh, ten rupees. That's pretty good. Yes, totally. And we'll have to keep your sword for a while. Again, basically until the screen changes. So, we're going to do this. Come through here. Go down there. And this is a little weird. Hmm. Okay, yeah, there's nothing under these. So we come up here. And this is one of the most memorable bits of Link to the Past because it is so strange. So you throw magic powder on this weird statue and we get this weird bat thing. Hey, blast you for waking me from my deep dark sleep. I mean, thanks a lot, sir. But now I will get my revenge on you. Get ready for it. Er, is that okay with you, sir? <laughs> I laugh at your misfortune. Now your magic power will drop by one half. Congratulations. Now do your best, even though I'm sure it won't be enough. Have a nice day. See ya. So yeah, that guy, he's a little strange. When he says our magic power will drop by one half, what actually happens is our magic consumption drops by one half. We now have twice, effectively a magic pool twice the size of the one we had previously. So, yeah. That guy is called the Mad Batter, and he shows up again in Link's Awakening. Okay, so that doesn't count as changing the screen. What you have to do instead is come here, go back, come back up, and let's talk to the blacksmiths. And now our temper our sword is tempered. And you can feel the sheer power throwing flowing through your body. Now, tempering is basically something you do to metal to make it make it more flexible. Um, a sword that isn't tempered is very brittle and will shatter, so I can't imagine the Master Sword wasn't tempered before. But, you know, it's a good way of just saying, hey, we made your sword stronger. So. And it's often referred to as the Bronze Sword, or the Level 3 Sword. Now, we can also do this, now that we can lift really heavy objects. We want to pound down every stake in this yard. All of them. Yes, it's one of those weird busy work things. But then again, if you're a Zelda player, you know, just seeing an entire yard full of stakes, it, probably this was your first uh, instinct anyway. And with that done, we come down here and we get a piece of heart. And that ups our heart level. Now, a lot of stuff is, well, not so much opened up to us, but we're now extremely powerful, especially for fairly early in the game. Because the dungeons are sort of balanced for you to go to two other dungeons before this one that we just did. So, you know, we've just taken a serious, serious, you know, boost. But our next area of um the next place we're going to go is the skull or skull the swamp dungeon which is in the swamp shock so we're gonna head there and then i'm gonna call it for this episode yeah it's it's not this one isn't necessarily a particularly long episode and at this point you may notice we have uh let's see four let's see Yep, there, we have, uh, let's see, 14 hearts. Uh, it, it takes me a second, they're hard to count like that. You get a total of 20 hearts in this game, and we have six more dungeons to go. Or, 
or five more dungeons to go. I'm sorry. We have five dungeons to go. Yeah, there are four pieces of heart left in this game, and we will not be able to get them until almost the end game. So from now on, this game's going to start going a lot faster. So, for now, we're going to come down here into the swamp. I will take you to the swamp palace, and we will leave off there. And next time, we will head into the swamp palace. Oh, that guy I was just killing, he's called a picket. He is basically this world, this game's version of the like-like. He will steal your shield, and if you do not kill him fast enough, he will, it will disappear. You can get it back if you kill him, and you can buy this shield for 50 rupees from other places. But that's, you know, you don't really want to have to do that. It's a pain in the neck. So, but here we are at the Watergate Dungeon, or the Swamp Palace, and I'm going to call it for now. So, thank you guys for being with me, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.